Yeah, I know, I'm a little late to the party on reviewing this one, but there's a perfectly good explanation for this. You see, I honestly didn't like Duke Nukem 3D that much. Knock it off! Okay, look, it's not that I don't understand the appeal of the game. I really do. I actually like the idea of a super egotistical badass killing aliens while tipping strippers and saving babes. My problem with the game lied in the gameplay. For starters, many of the levels were so horribly designed that it would take hours to complete a level that should only take 20 minutes. Combine that with the fact that many of the levels had so many flashing lights that it gave me motion sickness, this game just wasn't for me. But that's all in the past, and here we are with the long-awaited follow-up title, Duke Nukem Forever. So, after so many years, does this game live up to its expectations? Well, let's take a look and find out. This game starts off at the final boss battle of Duke Nukem 3D, and yes, strafing and shooting still works. After you defeat the boss, you flash forward to the present time, with Duke enjoying his retirement. Soon, the same aliens from before invade the planet and kidnap Duke's babes. Now taking this line down, Duke goes after the aliens to repel them off the planet once again. This game is a first-person shooter like the original, and also has many of the original features. For instance, there are still segments in which Duke shrinks and has to navigate through air ducts, or even drive RC cars. Along with just these segments, there are also many other over-the-top elements to this game, from being able to drink beer to augment Duke's fortitude, to being able to take steroids in order to kill enemies in a single punch, and of course, strippers. The comedy is also back in full swing this time around, from making references to the keycard system from the original game, to making Leroy Jenkins jokes, to taking stabs at Halo. Power armor is for pussies. Duke also has a large array of weapons with him this time around, from his trusty Ripper and Devastator, to a Shrink Ray or even a Freeze Ray. The combat system is set up similarly to most modern first-person shooters, in which you have a shield which is depleted while taking damage, but can be recharged over time while taking cover. However, instead of just a shield, Duke is shielded by his ego. His ego can be raised overall by participating in many events, such as looking at himself in the mirror, raising weights, defeating bosses, and much more. Overall, this campaign will run you around 7 hours. Along with just the normal campaign, however, there is also a multiplayer mode. I was initially extremely frustrated while playing this, and I was going to say it sucked, but then I realized that I was just looking at it the wrong way. While playing online, you start off with just your pistol, and have to find other weapons lying around. This gives the multiplayer a distinct old school feeling to it, so think of that what you will. There are five primary game modes. The first mode is Duke Match, in which you just kill everyone else in the area. The second is named Team Duke Match, which is pretty self-explanatory. The third is called Capture the Babe. In this mode, both teams have a babe at their base, and the objective is to kidnap the opponent's babe and take her to your base. The fourth primary mode is named Dukem, in which you can only use your fists or explosions to destroy your enemies, and punches count for one-hit kills. And the fifth and final mode is called Hail to the King, which is basically just like playing King of the Hill. Playing online gives you experience points, which can be used to either unlock different outfits to be used in the multiplayer, or to unlock different items for your dicks. These items vary from unlocking a pool table, to unlocking different babes for you to ogle at. Now for the reviewing. As far as the graphics go, well, let's put it this way. This game would have looked amazing in 2005. To be fair, that's to be expected when you're running a game on an engine from 2004, but this can occasionally be problematic, as it can cause glitches while playing. Aside from that, though, the character models and enemies are all fairly well designed, and the environments also look okay. As for the gameplay, the movements do occasionally feel a bit clunky, especially when jumping, but it usually won't get you killed, so at least it's got that going for it. The biggest problem with the gameplay is the enemy AI. Let's put it this way. The enemies are occasionally idiots. Sometimes they will try to take cover and flank you, and other times they will just suicide charge you for no apparent reason. This flaw can make the game much easier than it needs to be, and take out much of the challenge. So, here are my final thoughts on this game. Is this game great? Not really. But is it Duke Nukem? Yes. And honestly, after all this time, I think that's all anyone was asking for. So, until next time, this has been E-Dog, here to kick ass and chew bubblegum. And I'm not out of gum just yet. See you next time.